Hello, I'm Emma. Ah, parties. They're so much fun while you're doing them. And then they end and you have to clean up. Actually, I don't have to clean up. I was hired to be the nanny for little Alyssa Knox. Not to clean up after a party, but sometimes you have to take initiative. Initiative is seeing what needs to be done and doing it. Mrs. Knox actually took the initiative when she threw the party in the first place. It's not Alyssa's birthday or anything. <laughs> She got her own party because she said her first word. Balloon! Well, more like boon, but it, it's close enough. <laughs> I think that's a pretty neat reason to have a party. Actually, well, she gets a lot of parties. <laughs> I think her parents are just looking for reasons to celebrate. She got a party for her first tooth, uh, her first step, and the first time she slept through the whole night. <laughs> you can bet she'll get a huge party when she gets potty trained in a couple of years. There's a lot of cleanup involved, but maybe it's worth it to celebrate the milestones of a baby's life. I wish someone would celebrate every time I did something. Like, if I ate all my vegetables. Woo! Or if I brush my teeth and floss after every meal. Hooray, Emma! I'm probably not gonna get a party for brushing my teeth or eating vegetables anytime soon, but as you'll see in today's story, we have plenty of reasons to celebrate. Oh, <laughs> baby's awake. I, I better go check on her. Adorable. The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books together to tell one story, an incredible one, about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 6 and 8. Nehemiah led his brother Hanani and a friend we'll call Jake around the city walls of Jerusalem. Look how high our people have raised this wall. Hanani stared at the towering stones in amazement. When I rode up to Jerusalem on my last trip, this was all just a heap of rubble. Gaps everywhere, gates completely burned up and destroyed. Jake grinned and patted the neck of the donkey he rode. There, boy. Ah. Yeah, this little fella couldn't even get through. Sand Ballad and Tobiah, they laughed at you for even thinking you could do this. Isn't that what you said too? I plead the fifth. Fifth what? No idea. Well, I didn't build the wall alone. We did it. With God's help, he's the one who's given us success. Remember Tobiah said a fox could knock it down? Well, I'd like to know what a fox would say about our wall now. <laughs> what does a fox say? It's clear that God has been fighting for you, brother. He made my hands strong. He's the reason we finished the whole thing in just 52 days. Sand Ballard and Tobiah and all of them shaking in their sandals. They'd be fools to attack Jerusalem now. Nehemiah slowed down and smiled at his brother. I want to make sure they don't. That's why I'm putting you in charge of the city. Me? If you hadn't brought me news of the ruined walls while I was in Babylon, I never would have come to Jerusalem in the first place. The three men rounded a curve in the wall. There's the gate! Now that we have a safe place, we'll honor God by reading his law. A short time later, Nehemiah gathered all the people together. All the men and women and children gathered around the water gate at sunrise to hear the prophet Ezra read from God's word. The Lord is the great God. Amen. 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 Amen! Everyone bowed down, faces to the ground, and praised to God for all he had done for them. Ezra read God's word all the way through lunchtime, and the Levites taught the people what God's laws meant. We haven't followed God's rules. We haven't done a good job of loving God and loving others. I've been mean to my little sister. Mothers and fathers, boys and girls, all began to weep when they realized how far from God they had wandered. But Ezra encouraged them. This day is set apart to honor the Lord your God. So don't weep, 
Don't be sad! Nehemiah called out over the crowd. Go and enjoy some good food and sweet drinks. Send some of it to people who don't have any. This day is holy to our Lord. So don't be sad. The joy of the Lord makes you strong. Yeah! Party time! Tears turned to laughter as the people learned that it was time to celebrate one of God's feasts, Sukkoth. Sukkoth? What's that? The Feast of Booths. It's a way to remember how God took care of our people in the wilderness after he led them out of slavery in Egypt. Everyone lived in tents and booths. I want to make a booth. We need to go out and collect olive branches and, and build shelters to live in during the feast. I love that idea. <laughs> Get it? I love that idea. Sounds like olive. The donkey doesn't think much of your jokes. All the people went into the hill country. They cut branches from olive and myrtle and palm trees and brought them all back into the city. Then they built shelters everywhere, on rooftops and in front of the gates and even in the courtyard of God's temple. And all the people lived in those shelters for an entire week as they celebrated what God had done for them. Go God, go God, go, go, go God. Each day, Ezra read more of God's laws to them, and the people were overjoyed as they began to understand all that God had planned for them. There's one thing I could do better. Well, at least one thing. I could celebrate what God has done more. When Nehemiah and the people finished building the wall, they had a party for God that was so huge, we're still reading about it thousands of years later. That's some party. But for me, most of the time, I take what God does for me for granted. I mean, sure, there's Easter and Christmas, but how often do I really take the time to celebrate God throughout the year? Not too much. I think that should change. So here's something for you and me to try this week. Take a few moments and think about what God has done for you. It could be a prayer that he's answered. It could be the beautiful sunrise or a much needed rain. Or you can think about how God sent his only son to earth to give his life to pay for your sins. Hooray, God! And once you've thought of something that God has done for you, celebrate it. Tell God, thank you, somehow. Sing a song, do a dance, or throw a party. God deserves to be recognized. He deserves a praise. So look for ways to celebrate what he's done. That's the one thing to remember today. Look for ways to celebrate what God has done. Who knew showing initiative could be so much fun? I don't even mind so much that I had to take out the garbage. Sounds like she's still celebrating. <laughs> Emma. Did she, did Emma. she say, Emma? Emma. That's me. <laughs> That's worth another celebration right there. Go get your own party started. Oh, I'm coming, Alyssa. Emma's coming. 